we can refuse to think certain thoughts. Look how often you have refused to think a positive thought about yourself. Well, you can also refuse to think a negative thought about yourself, too. It seems to me that everyone on this planet that I know or have worked with is suffering from self-hatred and guilt to one degree or another. The more self-hatred and guilt we have, the less our life works. We find we have an inability to speak up for ourselves, and we are always trying to please others. Or we may be angry and explosive all the time. The less self-hatred and guilt we have, the better our lives work on all levels. This includes the health of the body, too. It has been my experience that the very bottom line for everyone I have worked with is always, I'm not good enough. And we often add to this, I don't do enough, or I don't deserve. Does this sound like you? Always saying or implying or feeling that you are not good enough? But for whom? And according to whose standards? Now, if these negative beliefs are very strong in you, then how can you possibly create a loving, joyous, prosperous, healthy life? Somehow your subconscious beliefs would always be contradicting these objectives and making sure you do not obtain your goals. I find that resentment, criticism, guilt, and fear cause more problems in our bodies and in our experiences than anything else. These feelings come from blaming others and not taking responsibility for our own lives. You see, if we are all 100% responsible for everything in our lives, then there is no one to blame. Whatever is happening out there is only a mirror of our own inner thinking. I am not condoning other people's poor behavior, but we must realize it is our beliefs that attract to us people that will treat us that way. If you find yourself saying, everyone always does such and such to me, criticizes me, ignores me, takes advantage of me, or abuses me, then this is your pattern. There is some thought in you that attracts this behavior. On some internal level, you believe you deserve to be treated this way. Or you treat other people this way, and it is just coming back to you. Whatever we give out, mental, physical, or verbal, will come back to us. When we no longer think or behave this way, the other people will change their behavior or they will go and do that to someone else who believes they deserve it. You will no longer be attracting the experiences you say you do not want. Whether we want to change a life experience or a physical problem, the place to begin is to say so. Literally say, I am willing to release the pattern within me that is creating this experience or this condition. You can say this to yourself over and over every time you think of your illness. Say this with me now. I am willing to release the pattern in me that has created this condition. The minute you say this affirmation, you are stepping out of the victim role. You are no longer helpless. You are acknowledging your own power. You are saying, I may not understand it, but somehow I am beginning to understand that I contributed to creating this problem, and now I take my own power back, and I am releasing it and letting it go. What a powerful statement to have your subconscious mind supporting. As I said, resentment of others, 
Criticism of ourselves, guilt over the past, and fear of the future are the most damaging mental thought patterns we can have. This kind of internal dialogue creates and maintains dis-ease in the body. These thoughts can destroy the body. Fear can contribute to baldness, ulcers, colon problems, and even painful feet, among other things. Criticism as a permanent habit can often lead to arthritis in the body. Resentment long held eats away at the body and becomes the dis-ease we call cancer. Guilt always looks for punishment and creates pain. Fear comes from not trusting the process of life to be there for us. You know, the most precious thing in our life is our breath. If you did not take another breath, you would not last three minutes. Yet you have such faith that your next breath will be there that you don't even think about it when you exhale. Now, if the power that created us has given us enough breath to last for as long as we shall live, can we not begin to trust that the rest will also be provided for us? The next time you are frightened, think about the abundance of air and say, I trust the process of life to take care of me. Whenever someone is in pain, I know they have created a lot of guilt for themselves. Chronic pain comes from unrelenting guilt, often so buried that we are not even aware of it anymore. This guilt must be dissolved before the pain can be eliminated. Guilt is a totally useless emotion. It never makes anyone feel better, nor does it change a situation. Your sentence is now over. Let yourself out of prison. Anger combined with guilt often contributes to accidents. The degree of physical damage lets us know how severely we felt we needed to be punished and how long the sentence. Where this pain occurs in the body gives us a clue to which area of life we feel guilty about. Critical people often attract a lot of criticism because it is their pattern to criticize. They are often cursed with perfectionism, the need to be perfect at all times in every situation. Do you know of anyone on this planet who is perfect? I do not. Why do we set up standards that say that we have to be super person in order to be barely acceptable? That is such a heavy burden to carry. When I was a little girl, I had a very difficult childhood. My parents divorced when I was 18 months. I was raped when I was five. I became a battered child and grew up in the Depression. My mother was very much a victim, and my stepfather constantly expressed his own brutalized childhood. I grew up having a lot of resentment. I had to create cancer in my own body before I was willing to begin to release that resentment. I am certainly not condoning the behavior of any of the people who mistreated me. However, for me to spend a lifetime just running the old movie, feeling blame and anger and resentment, is not doing me any good in the present moment. I learned that resentment only eats away at me, and it did. In my case, holding on to old blame and feeling resentful for all that they did to me helped to create my disease. Releasing and letting go helped me to heal myself. The past is over and done. We cannot change that now. We can change our attitude toward the past and our thoughts toward the past. How foolish for us to punish ourselves in the present moment 
because someone else hurt us in the long-ago past. It's not worth it. I often say to people who have deep resentment patterns, please begin to dissolve the resentment now when it is relatively easy. Don't wait until you're under the threat of a surgeon's knife and you have to cope with panic too. It is vital that we release foolish, outmoded, or negative ideas and beliefs that do not support us and nourish us. Our concepts of ourselves and of life and of God must support us, not negate us. No matter what our disease, if we choose to believe that we are helpless victims and that it is all hopeless, then the universe will support us in that belief and we will just go down the drain. When people come to me with a problem, I don't care what it is, poor health, lack of money, unfulfilling relationships, or stifled creativity, there is only one thing I ever work on and that is Loving the self. I find that when we really love and accept and approve of ourselves exactly as we are, then everything in life flows. 